Hi, James. Congratulations on this documentary. Thanks, man. So, uh, thank you. So, I, I mean, it, um, for for Turning Point, it's a uh, you, you you got it out right on time for what Al Alzheimer's Day. Well, I think that they're releasing it. That's that's the distributor's uh, uh, idea of good timing. Yeah. <laughs> it took a long, I had no idea it would be coming out. It took a long time to make it. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm glad it's coming out and, and it, people can connect with it certainly on that level. So, um, so tell me their origins of uh, this documentary, because I know you've done a lot of films in the past, but what, what inspired you to do a documentary on Alzheimer's? Well, I did a documentary a few years ago um, called Glenn Campbell, I'll Be Me which was on CNN and at the time was uh, and, and has been the highest rated movie they ever did. And, and uh, um, it was curious because when we first sold it to them, we wondered would people connect with it? And then you realize that one out of two people are gonna get Alzheimer's and you know, if, if we live long enough. And I became involved, I was very, re I was reluctant to come to the world of Alzheimer's. When they asked me to, I'd done a movie called Walk the Line and then somebody asked me to do this thing on, uh, Julian Raymond asked me to, to do Glenn Campbell and said, it's only five weeks, he's coming, he's got Alzheimer's and my partner Trevor and Albert at the time thought, Alzheimer's? I don't, <laughs> no man, that, that, that sounds like, uh, it scared me. The word scared me. I had no idea what it was. And then I met Glenn and and Glenn came into the studio and he said, hi, uh, I'm here to talk to you about making a film about my part-timers. I said, your part-timers? Yeah, I thought Alzheimer's. He says, no, I got part-timers. And uh, he immediately showed his sense of humor and then his wife was there and, and, she, and he said, well, he pointed to Kim. He says, "When I a man finds a good woman, he finds a good thing. I got me a good thing right here." And I saw, I, I saw all of a sudden this guy had a tremendous personality, and he wanted to make a movie about his Alzheimer's. And he knew what was going to happen. He knew where he was going with it. But he said, "You know, uh, I'm cool with it, and uh, I'm going to be doing a few shows." And, and it, Julian said, "It's only five weeks, few shows." Turned out to be 171 shows, two and a half years of filming, over 2,000 hours of film. And I got to see Alzheimer's up close and very, very personal. I became very close to their family. And um, it was, it won three Grammys, nominated for an Academy Award. It was, and, and it, it took me on the journey of Alzheimer's. Now that film, CNN was looking for sponsorship and, and one of the executive producers, uh, Nancy Lynn, had a relationship with the, the folks at Eli Lilly. And we went up to Eli Lilly to show the film. Mm -hmm. And um, they, uh, we were sitting in a restaurant and this waitress came over to me and she said, what do you, what do you folks here to do? And I said, we're, we're gonna go show a film over at, Eli, uh, over at Eli Lilly. And I was thinking, of course, she was gonna bash the drug company mm -hmm. because you know that's what everybody was doing at the yeah. time. And, uh, and she said, oh, I love them. I said, you love them? She said, why? She said, well, my grandmother has diabetes. She's my favorite woman in the world, and, and they've kept her alive. I said, oh. All of a sudden, my perspective changed just a little bit about, oh, they're about making drugs that help people. I get it. So now I go across the street, and Phyllis Farrell is there, and, uh, and uh she says, the, before we, you know, they, they wanted me to show some clips. They wanted me to show the film. And, but before we do that, I, I'd like you to meet um, the research scientists. And I met with, uh, he said, this is Pat May. And Pat's retiring today, by the way. You came on a very special day. And, um, and this is Ron D'Amato and Eric Seamers. And they're all in the film, of course. And Pat, Pat I said, so tell me, you guys, what, what have you, what drugs have you, have you got coming on the market or have you discovered? None. What do you, what, what, what do you mean none? He said, well, well, Pat came very close. What do you mean? And Pat, tell him what happened. He said, well, I was developing a drug called Semagasistat. By the way, it took me years to be able to pronounce Semagasistat. Um, <laughs> after all this time, I, I know all the names of the drugs. And he said, Semagasistat. And I said, and he said, I worked on it for about 
20, 30 years, and we've got into phase three clinical trials. And then right in the middle of the trial, my wife died. And, and then my father came down with Alzheimer's and then the drug failed. And so I'm retiring now. I said, so how long did you work on it? Uh, 30 years, 25, 30 years. That would be like me making a movie. 30 years and nobody ever seeing it. And I realized that this, this is, this is a human story that has not been told that the story of these research scientists, these are superheroes. They are like in the movie, they, they, they are superheroes in the sense that they, you, you, like in the Marvel comics, that a lot of those guys start as superheroes and then they become, you know, scientists, I mean, and then they become superheroes anyway. So I said to Phyllis and the folks there, I said, you know what? This is a movie. This is a, something really interests me. The, and 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 um, and I said I would like to track one of the drugs and see what happens. You know, and and, and uh, we said, well, we have a drug called solanezumab, and we're hopeful that it's going to work. And of course, we all thought they all thought when we started it was going to work. And of course, we know what happens. And um, so I, it, it was just it, for me as a filmmaker, it's about the human journey. And what I discovered is, is that all these folks have, well, not all of them, but 80% of them have Alzheimer's in their family. And, you know, it, it touches all of us. And uh, so that's why we made it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. I, I could barely pronounce this. So, so names them, man. <laughs> right. Um, so Aducanumab, you know, um, uh, you know, the tau, the tau hypothesis, the amyloid hypothesis. You know, at this point, you know, uh, you know, after all the years of working on it, I, I probably should get an honorary PhD. But I, I'm just kidding, of course. But, you know. So, so outside of you know the the film that you worked on, or um, or Eli Lilly, how much other type of what? How did you approach the other type of research that you wanted to put in? Because, because I noticed that you brought in political subjects and the history of Alzheimer's into uh, your documentary too. Yes, absolutely. Well, one of the things is that is that uh, I had complete control over the cut of the film, you know, and I and I did not want to make a film that was um, a puff piece for pharma by any means. In fact, I wanted to tell the truth about what was going on, at least from this person's point of view, you know, and, and, not, and be fair about it, you know? And it, so we talk about in the film, there are bad actors. There are bad actors in the, in the pharmaceutical industry. There are drug prices that are too high. There, there you know, that uh, uh, Washington has a problem in getting fundraising for Alzheimer's. I mean, this is a, this is a, as Senator Markey says, this is a tsunami that is on its way to us, you know, in the next few years, you know, folks that are getting 70 plus, you know, and actually even younger, they're discovering Alzheimer's is, is, is not, can start in the 50s now. Um, and if they don't find something that slows it down, it's gonna, it could break the economy. You know, I mean, it could be it could be worse than than the COVID, you know, and I think, of course, what has made it very contemporary now is with COVID. All of a sudden, you know, you the drug companies they're they're not talking about drug pricing all the time. They're saying which company is going to come up with the vaccine. All of a sudden, the research scientists and the, and the guys that are those are the guys that are going to save our lives. They're going to actually put our economy back on track as opposed to causing everybody's economic woes to be, be worse. So, um, yeah. Don't know if I answered your question, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, how long did this movie actually take? Because, uh, because I'm familiar with pharmaceuticals that, uh, that takes like 15 to 20 years just to come up with the drug. Because I used to be a business journalist in San Diego, and there's tons of pharmaceutical companies down there, and and they tell me like how they spend hundreds of millions of dollars going through all these trials and not coming to fruition. So obviously, your documentary also took a long time. Talk about that journey. We worked on the film off and on eight years, so 2014, yeah, five, six years, five, five years, yeah. You know, and they were in phase, they were going into phase three when I started on solanezumab, when we started the film. And so that took a, a couple of years there 
and then um yeah it's been several years working on it yeah are are you surprised the fact that um these drugs uh, take a very long time with the you know the strict policies of like you know the fda and so on but but like um like one of the things that uh, it's very noted is that we're trying to develop like a vaccine for covid and that's probably going to come within months, not the 15 to 20 years, like anything else is coming out. Well, the COVID is a viral thing. Alzheimer's, you have to get through what is known as the blood brain barrier. COVID, you can take it in and it affects the entire body. It's the, especially the stomach, you know, the inflammation. It's, it's an inflammation, COVID is a, it's, a, it's an inflammation. Alzheimer's is an inflammation thing too, but you, you have, tau proteins or amyloid proteins in the brain and in order for the drug to be uh, to, to, to be safe you, you have to get through the blood brain barrier and obviously you don't want to kill somebody's brain alzheimer's is already doing a good job with that and so to get something to actually stop the amyloid to prevent it from getting into the brain is really hard it's the body, the hardest thing to do is to, I mean, if you look at all neurological diseases, you know, they're trying to find cures for Parkinson's, uh, Lewy body dementia, ALS, uh, Alzheimer's, any kind of other kinds of dementia, you know, it's, it's to get through that blood brain barrier and to stop the, it's, it's, it's really, really hard. So a vaccine is one thing, you know, that's, 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 but it's, t it actually takes, you know, I, I, I'm a little skeptical about the drug, having a vaccine in six months. I, I really am. It's all the scientists I talk to, they go, oh, man, we hope so. We hope so. But, you know, you still have to test it in, you know, 40, 50,000 people. Yeah. And, you know, and and if it's people your age or, or, or people my age, who's going to want to take it if they know that they're in jeopardy of, dying from it or having a blood clot. That's, that's just on, on, on the COVID side of things. But, you know, I mean, it's hard. It's the, the, and that's why Alzheimer's has had such a tough time. Yeah. You know, the, the, I've been to all these, these conferences and, you know, there's a new drug called aducanumab. It's not new, actually. It's a, it's another amyloid, high, amyloid drug. And, um, Bio, a company called Biogen's developing it, and they thought that uh, their phase three trial was looking good, and then all of a sudden, it they weren't making their endpoints halfway through the trial, so they stopped it. Their stock dove, and then they kept going with some of the, you know they they looked at all the data when it was fine, and they went, wait a second, this is actually working. So. Now they're back in phase three, and there's some hope that it might it might work. And the so solanezumab is still being used in younger people. So it makes it makes sense that if they could develop a drug like Lipitor for heart disease, if they could find just something that that was a preventative for the amyloid going into the brain, that would be really good. And so they're going uh, younger and younger. So you know, and now with the the advent of, of the PET scan, that before they couldn't see Alzheimer's until people were dead, you know? That's the only way they could look at it. You would do an autopsy and they look at the brain. Now they have, they have, pet, they have scan, PET scans with tracers that can go into the brain and actually, actually see the, the plaques and the amyloid in the brain. And hopefully they'll be able to start looking younger and younger and you know, when does it start to develop and what can we do to slow it down, you know? And that's that's the game they're trying to play. It's really hard. Alzheimer's is all, all the blood, all the neurological diseases are really really tough, you know, because you don't want to mess up there because you're messing with somebody's brain. Yeah, you know, absolutely. How much access did uh, Eli Lilly actually uh, allowed you to uh, to film and um, access to their research? Total, total access. You know. I had to sign a non-disclosure stuff. They, when, 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 I, when they found out uh, about solanezumab, they, uh, uh, well, what I found, I was in the room when they found out about it. And I had to give them my film. I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Obviously, I couldn't have any stock in the company. 
you know, and I had to keep my mouth shut. I had to tell nobody, you know, because obviously that, so they gave me the access to, and it took some time for them to get to know me and to trust me, you know, but it, the filming over a period of years of constantly coming there and constantly interviewing, I went all over the world. We filmed in Barcelona. We filmed, we went to England and talked to their research scientists there. I was trying, I was doing a deep dive on what it is to, to uh, develop a drug and how difficult it is and how complex is it. It's not just like, hey, I got an, I've got my chemistry lab here and you know, we're gonna, we, we're gonna develop a drug. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty tough, you know, to do it. And I, you know, it gives me an appreciation of just how, you know, uh, there's a lot of drugs on the market, but just how tough it is to develop something that works, you know? So. When, when you brought in some of your interview subjects, like the research scientists and the Alzheimer's patients, was it hard to convince them to, uh, to be a part of this documentary? Um, it wasn't hard to convince them to be part of it because they wanted to be part of helping other people. Their attitude was very similar to mine, and that is we're trying to, in Glenn's, Campbell's, we want to make a difference. We want to show this. We want to show there's no shame in the game. This is what we have. They're not in denial. You know, I'm not going to do something that's humiliating or embarrassing to them. And, you know, that would be the last thing I want to do because I find what they're doing is very noble. And, uh, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't hard. No, uh, it, 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 it was, um, it was difficult because we shot so much film in selecting the ones that we'd use in the film in the final version of the film. That was, that was hard because there was a lot of wonderful, wonderful people that interviewed for the film that didn't make it into the film. Because yeah. obviously the film can only be a certain length, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, you also brought in um, the big names of, uh, you know, Senator Ed Markey and um, Neil de, um, deGrasse um, Tyson. Could you talk about uh, those two subjects for your film? Well, Nancy Lynn, one of the executive producers, had worked with Neil Tyson at the Museum of Natural History for 14 years. So I said, I would love to, we, there was a, all, I would constantly ask the question of the scientists. I'd say, so what is more complicated, the brain or the universe. And finally, I said, we got to talk to the guy who knows more about the universe and have him talk about the brain. So that's, that's how we get, so we, we got to Neil and we talked to him and, and, and it was fascinating, you know, and, and when I was at Harvard interviewing Reese Sperling's, the, the people in the classroom, they, they would all talk about, you know, Neil Tyson, Neil Tyson, you know, you know, he knows about the universe. And I would ask them the, that question because I find it, I, 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 that's how com you ask about how, why is it so hard? I mean, think about the universe. It's pretty complex. The brain is even more complex. Neil would argue with me, I think. He would say it's probably the other way around. But Neil Tyson said, you know, it was fascinating what he said. He said, Sooner or later, somebody's going to find a cure, and it's going to be very simple. He's just going to say, they'll see it, boom. They'll turn, turn it just this way, and all of a sudden, they'll see what it is. And he said, that's what science is like. you just got to keep looking and looking and looking. Senator Markey has been a friend of mine for a long time. So he was in Glen Campbell as well. And when we did the interviews with, in Washington with Nancy Pelosi, and we wanted to get the political side, Glenn was brought to the Hill to testify in front of Congress. And if you haven't seen the movie, I, I would recommend it to you. It's, it's very moving and very, very powerful. And, and, and it's funny. Glenn is really funny and can play his butt off. He's an incredible musician. Anyway, so Ed, Ed, Ed's uh, um, mother uh, died uh, of, of Alzheimer's. Hmm. So he's very involved with the Alzheimer's movement. So. Great. One of the things that um, that I did like is that you you revisited try to try to revisit everybody um, during uh, COVID times. Could you talk about them um, adding that po portion to the documentary? Because you, you, technically you were you were kind of, you you were you were sort of finished with the documentary, and then you wanted to add another chapter. Well, I thought it was if, if there was ever a time that people could connect with the importance of science 
and the relevance of science is now. I think the awareness of people now is so much height, more heightened. And um, so I thought this is, a, this is a great opportunity to even uh, uh, emphasize even more the, the importance of, of scientists and research and and now in the film it explains what clinical trials are people will now understand what the covid vaccines are going to have to go through they'll have they'll have a reference that they didn't have before um because I, I think I, I i think we did a good job of explaining how clinical trials work and i don't think many people understood that before uh, i haven't seen it in too many films it's, it's it's always very scientific and very kind of dry you know and 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 dot, 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 and I think there's emotion connected with the clinical trials here, and there's emotion connected with COVID, and and also the influence it's had on the research trials that are going on now with Alzheimer's. I think that that has, you know, as Risa says, it's really hard, and uh, and Dave Rick's talking about waving through the window at his mother-in-law who's got Alzheimer's, you know, and that the re the reality is is that we need these people. And this emphasizes it even more. Absolutely. Well, let, let me uh, start wrapping things up. Uh, when, when, when audiences get to check out uh, your documentary, Turning Point, what is the one lesson that they actually, that you hope that they could take away from a film like this? To support science. To support science, yeah. And to really take care of themselves and, and to also really emphasize that we need to help our, our country find a, uh, something to help with Alzheimer's, support Alzheimer's research, because it's going to affect all of us. And, uh, and don't look at pharma just as numbers and politically. Try really hard not to. Try to look at it. It's, this is about science. This is about your children's lives and our lives. And, you know, and, and also work, support programs to reduce drug prices, of course. I'm not saying that not, not, don't, you know, there's always going to be somebody that's going to try and take, take your money from you and, and take too much. So that don't be irresponsible about that, but don't conflate science and, and money together. Science is where it's at. That's right. Listen to science. And um, one, one more thing before I, I let you go. I mean, it's a, it's a fun, it's a funny question or topic to talk about because it's, times like this but how are you staying creative and sane during during the pandemic um i mean because uh you know the industry is practically par um, paralyzed and is slowly opening back up again so what 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 is it like for you well the interview some of the interviews that i did in the film i did them virtually you know i had a crew go to go to indianapolis and film there and i was sitting here talking just like i am to you and they, so that's one way with some virtually I'm developing, you know, doing sizzle reels do, uh, for films that people want me to make. Um, I'm reading a lot, you know, and, uh, um, playing golf. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm trying, I'm just trying to stay positive and, you know, we have a, an, an, another film coming out called Linda and the Mockingbirds, which is coming out soon. And so that's taken up my time. We've been editing that and then that's, that, you know, so. And just trying to, you know, I'm seeing my kids and just trying to stay positive in these times. It's hard. It's really, really hard, you know, but I, I'm very fortunate. You know, I'm fortunate that I have a conversation that I can talk to you about something that means something to me and that the world is gonna, you know, so I'm blessed and I'm very fortunate. And for those people that aren't, I, I, I pray for them and I, I hope that uh, things turn around quick and I hope science wins the day for us, you know. It's not gonna be politics that does. I'm, I'm sick of the politics on both sides. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it makes me, it stresses me out. I can't deal with it. <laughs> well, um... As, as a person who uh, had a grandfather who died of Alzheimer's, I really appreciate uh, you creating a film that, uh, that shows, you know, um, hope and opportunity for, for, for some of us in the future. So I, I think this is. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I, and thank you for your, your good questions. Hey, not a problem. Hey, thank you. Hopefully we do this again next time. Okay. I'll see you, man. Bye. Okay. Bye now.